So hi everyone, got the sign that the talk starts. So welcome to my talk, I'm Ludwig, and today our topic is Git native packaging. And two hours ago we had a talk about the practical aspects of packaging with Git today. And what I present here is basically ideas how we could do it in the future, so there's no, no actual implementation of that. So if you expect that, sorry to disappoint you, this is just theories. But I would really like to hear your feedback on that, especially if you're a packager or working on the distribution, um, to check if that method could actually work in practice. But first, let's take a look at what packaging at distro level actually means. So our job is to turn software source code into binary packages, basically. And in our world, the packager is not necessarily the developer. So usually there's no one-to-one -one relationship between package and developer or upstream project. Usually one packager has lots of packages, hundreds maybe, and some packages even work horizontally, so they, they don't have a dedicated package, but they work across a whole range, for example, to integrate distribution-wide changes. So our job is mostly doing integration work, applying modifications on top of upstream software. And to make sure we, we can build distributions at the scale we do, the whole process to maintain packages needs to be scalable. It means we rely on standard ways to take upstream software, apply our changes, and get them to build. And the concept for that is packaging pristine sources. That is a concept that even predates RPM. And the idea is that we take the unmodified upstream sources, so usually the tarball, we store our changes as individual patches next to the sources, and then we apply them. How they get applied is specified in a build description file, aka spec file. That is a file that is quite easily readable by humans and also the machine. So everyone knows that. Here's an example. Um, pretty straightforward. Like you declare the name of the package, the version of the package, and then you have the actual upstream sources and then a list of patches that we have to apply. The rest is basically RPM-specific syntax, but quite obvious, there's rules to apply the patches and then rules to build the package and rules to install it and then a list of files. With this description file, anyone in SUSE can basically modify any package. So if L3 has to fix a package, even if they don't know what this package is about, they quite certainly know how to apply a patch in this package because, you know, take the, check out the package, apply the patch, put it in OBS, and it builds a new package. But is that still the way to build software nowadays? So, like, taking a tarball is like, uh, so, 2000s, when you still had software on an FTP server, and you got the tarball that way, so it was a good idea to take the tarball and then apply a patch, right? But nowadays, it feels a bit outdated, Everyone is using Git, right? Right? That's the question that I was asked, so I actually took a look at Ring Zero. And indeed, out of the like 130 packages, more than 100 already use Git upstream. The rest, like the 10 in OBS, is basically our own stuff, where we just put the spec file and some C file or whatever directly in OBS. So it could actually just be put in Git. And the rest is some old version control systems or outdated ones, and eight of them even still use tarballs. Question from Hannes. Wait for the microphone. These are packet numbers? These are package numbers, yeah, right. from Ring Zero. How can a single package use several systems? Uh, it's, it's two in Fossil, two in CVS, and there's one each in Debian, Mercurial, Perl, and SVN. Ah, one each. Oh, yeah, right. exactly. Oh, okay. Otherwise, the slide would be a bit long. Um, so anyway, so the majority of upstream projects already use Git. It's kind of odd that we uh, create, a, create a tarball out of some upstream SCM and then apply patches. So the question is, can we use Git directly? It means no tarball and no patches. It means like our changes as Git commits. And maybe we can even put the spec file into Git, because right now the, the spec file version or the history of the spec file is tracked independently of the actual upstream sources. So it would be really convenient if you had the spec file next to the upstream sources in Git. 
At the same time, we need to retain the scalability that we had or still have with, with our method. So we, we should have some standardized way how to apply our changes to packages so that everyone in SUSE knows how it works. If everyone does something else, then we have complete chaos and, and it's really hard to, to, to maintain uh, packages across the, the board, like working horizontally. So, I mean, the answer to that is, is yes, at least I think so. But let's take a look at how Git works internally before we can explain how it could be done. So some Git basics. Git has three objects, basically. That is blob, tree, and commit. So a blob is the actual file content, like the, the, the actual binary. A tree is a directory listing. A directory listing can either give a name to a blob or refer to another tree. And then we have commits, and a commit has a message, an author, a date, and specifies which trees it, it uses. So by linking commit, chaining commits, you can have trees and you walk the history with, the, with those. So if you take a look at a um, basic upstream Git tree, it could like, look like this, like a hello world. It had some initial set of files and then another set of files and it was tagged as version 1.0. And meanwhile, the main branch continued and has a, some other commit on top. So if you want to package this upstream tree in Git, uh, we would modify this thing in Git, we would probably create an OpenSUSE branch and apply our changes, add our spec file. So it would look like this model here, independent of the upstream. Quite easy to understand, like if you know that the OpenSUSE branch is our change, then you can follow the history and you see exactly what we changed. That is very simple, up to the point where you need to do the same with a new version of the upstream. So suppose upstream releases a new version, tags the main branch with version 1.1, and now we want to have an OpenSUSE package made of that. So the, the naive way would be uh, just merge upstream, but then we end up with a history like this. Now, one of those changes we applied could have actually been merged upstream. So even though there's commits in the OpenSUSE branch, they are maybe no longer relevant because they are already on the other side also. And if there's more upstream versions, you end up with lots of merges and kind of chaotic history. At least I have problems following what actually happened in this package in such a model. So then the next way to, to do it differently would be to do a rebase. So we just tell Git to apply all the changes we did on the new version. Then again, we have a nice linear history with new commits and we again see each individual change. If one of those changes we applied downstream was merged upstream, the commit would just vanish. Now the disadvantage of this is that the old version is gone. Like what if we want to still do something with the 1.0 version of the OpenSUSE package, like submit it to a stable release. It's gone, it would be garbage collected by Git. We can't get to it anymore. Also, you would have to force push this OpenSUSE branch here. Is there a solution? Yeah. For example, OBS does something like that too, right? So in OBS, we have factory and we submit our packages to factory and factory somehow doesn't have conflicts ever. How do they do that? So when you do changes in your devil project, you modify the tree basically, and you have a history in your devil project. Then you submit to factory, and factory doesn't actually take your commit, it just takes the tree and copies the tree into factory and creates a new commit on server side. So visualizing that like I did with Git before, looks like this, two completely independent histories. Both are linear because OBS um, um, can only do it like this. But now with the power of Git, could we do the same in Git? Yes. We create a factory branch with an independent start point, like MT3 in the beginning. And when we submit our initial 1.0 OpenSUSE package, we just take the tree and create a commit in the factory branch that refers to the commit in our OpenSUSE branch without ever trying any merge. Because 
we just take the tree. There is no reason to do any merge. And when there's a new version of, of, of this package, the packager would again submit this tree to factory, and the factory branch would have to create a commit that links to the commit you submitted. Now with this, we have a linear history in factory. If you follow the first parent in the factory branch, you actually see a history very similar to the one we have in factory right now. And there's even a, like a git log and even git log dash dash first parent or something like that, where you get the history. That one might even serve as, uh, as um, data for the changes file, the, the dreadful changes file we have. So by inventing some method, how to create the commit message in this factory branch. We could specify this as the content for the changes file of the package. In any commit in this factory branch, we could go to the second parent and we end up in the history of the original package. And if we follow that, we end up in the history of the upstream project. So the full history of, of upstream of this package, including our changes for every version, would be in this tree without creating any conflict. The OpenSUSE branch would still have to be force pushed, of course, um, because on, on, on server side it, it would, would change. But on the, on the factory branch, there's no force pushes needed. So that, that would be the, the model for a single package. Now, could we do the same for a whole project? What's a project? It's a directory with subdirectories, and the subdirectories are packages. What we want to have is a single commit ID for the overall source state of the project. And that is something that OBS doesn't offer right now. Like, uh, if, if Dominic does a check-in to, to factory, he checks in a staging with 100 packages, and they all end up with, as individual commits in, in the packages in factory, but you, you can't ever roll back a, a staging. So with Git, we, we could have this feature. One single commit that, that, that um, defines the set of packages in that moment in time. But at the same time, we want to be able to still have individual packages tracked. So I want to go to the QAMU package and see the history of the QAMU package in factory. I don't want to go through the, the history of the whole project, including all packages. So one approach could be uh, so-called monorepo. So we just start with the, with the model of this package we had before. In addition to what we did with the package, we create a new history for a project. And the tree in that project just uh, links to the, to the trees of the individual packages. Again, we don't need to do any merges. It's just this, for this package, this tree. And the commit will always refer to the factory branch of each package. With this model again, we would have a linear history in the project. If we follow the first parent, we see exactly at which point in time which package got checked in, or which set of packages. With this, we could check in 100 packages at the same time, have a tree at that point in time, and you see it in the commit. In every single commit, we could go to the second parent, and we end up in the factory branch of the package, and see the linear history of the package in there. And in the second uh, parent of, of the factory branch, again, we are in the, in the package following the full history of the, of the package and upstream. That has the advantage that such a project includes the full history of all packages, is kind of self-contained. So if you clone that somewhere from OBS to IBS, all is self-contained, you need no external references. This advantage is it includes the full history of all packages. Because, I mean, imagine there's LibreOffice, the kernel, and other big things in there, so this repo will be insanely huge to clone. So, it's probably inconvenient. And as far as I know, you would also have to do that if you want to clone an individual package. So, you can't just go there and just pick, I don't know, AA base from this project. You always have to check out all of them. So, for practical purposes, this monorepo probably doesn't work for distribution of our scale, so we need something that is more convenient. 
And a solution to that could be sub-modules. How do they work? So before I said that trees always refer to other trees or blobs. Now with Git submodules, they, they did a trick, and an entry in, in this directory listing in the tree can also refer to a, another commit. So it's basically a level of indirection. So it pretends that the, the tree links to another tree, but in fact it links to a commit. And that commit doesn't need to be in the same Git repo. That's the trick that the Git submodule command does. So with that approach, you can have a project that only contains the, the top directory and dangling links, so to say, to the subdirectories. So with that, it's really easy to, to just check out factory. Would be with, with the blink of an eye, you only have this of factory without any single package. And then you can individually activate the packages in your checkout. So to visualize, it would look like this. The, the project is only by itself, contains no packages. Very easy. The disadvantage is here, or the thing that needs to be taken care of, that the packages are still around. So since the project and the package is not linked, someone could actually delete the, the package or the factory branch in the package, or do some nasty things with the branch, like uh, going back in, in time, referring to an old commit, and then the project would be invalid because it, it can't find the commit anymore. So we're, with, with this model, the server, some, uh, the server side of this um, Git hosting solution would have to make sure that this is consistent and we don't lose any package or any commit that our project refers to. In practice, the Git modules are also a bit inconvenient because you have to use this .git modules file, which for factory would be a file that has 10,000 entries. Um, then you don't see the forest for all the trees anymore. So I think we need to work a bit on the on the git submodule commands and, and, and user interface if we want to use that for our purposes. Okay, do I still have time? Question, yeah. Yeah, maybe we take a break and take some, some questions if there are any before I continue. Yeah. Sure, so I, I like submodules technically. And so when I'm working on Velociraptor, there's a bunch of different things that use submodules in it. But what I've found is that when you're using multiple branches using the same clone, the submodules get out of sync really quickly. And it can be painful to try to align them to where they need to be again in order to make the repository happy again. So if we go this route, we're going to need to find some way to make that a lot easier to work with. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is a pain in the ass. Absolutely, this is. <laughs> But the technology behind this is surprisingly simple. It's like, if you just look at the tree, it has the commits linked there. And if you know where, where those commits are supposed, uh, are supposed to come from, it's really easy to, to fill the directory content. But the tooling itself is annoying. I, I fully agree with that. Um, one other thing missing here is the um, uh, verification side of things. So. Um, at least with the, this rebase example you have for, for the OpenSUSE branch, um, when that's done, we're then throwing out any um, signatures we have on those um, commits, right? Um, yeah. So if you if you put signatures in the OpenSUSE branch, then they would be invalidated by rebasing. But only in the new version, of course. So if you have uh, commits on the on the old side, like uh, the, the signatures here would still be valid, right? And also with this model, you have the chance to put signatures here. And if that commit is created on server side, you can even change it on server side. Like I could imagine that you, that you actually push this one to the remote, and then the, the remote figures out, oh, this is something that I, suppose that I should integrate into the factory branch, create this one on server side, and then you have reviews where people can attach signatures here. Yeah. I really like this approach. Um, I think one thing I'd always envision, envision was um, uh, basically storing on the company side um, the trusted uh, keys for, say, downstream developers. Um, I think that would 
then potentially have to be done, like, I guess at the project level or potentially then um, in a separate sub-module tier, um, which they could retain then change log, um, trusted signatures, this sort of thing. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the signature topic would probably fill a talk on its own and uh, it's worth talking to Adam about that. Adam Meyer, he <laughs> spent quite some thought on that. But I think there's no agreement or no, no final proposal how to do that. But I think with this model, we have the chance to do it in a way that doesn't suck. Because yeah, they, in your devil project, you can put signatures here and manage the keys however you like. In the factory branch, we can, can do something on server side, define reviews here. And on project level, we can also put signatures because even though we have a factory branch here, we could use this package in multiple products. Like this could be factory itself or tumbleweed, could be micro S, could be alp whatever, or your own thing. And then you, maybe you define your own rules how you assign the, the check-ins into this project. More questions? Okay, then I'm not sure I can finish with the rest. Um, how does this work on a project level? Uh, the workflow, how does the workflow look like, the development workflow on project level? So, a simple example, we have an empty factory basically and a simple hello package. And we want to submit that to factory. Both are Git repos, like I'm thinking of the way GitHub does it or Git or GitLab. So, you have like the, the a project that is called projects and a repo that is called factory and a project that is called pool has the package hello in it. So now the developer wants to submit that thing to, to factory. First step would be to create a draft of this factory branch we talked before. So I was thinking that we could use a different namespace basically. Branches are normally in, in refs heads in, in this .git directory. And we could define a namespace like refs requests, and you would the developer would push into that. And then the server side could detect that the developer did something there and create step two and three in this model, like clone the project, which would be the staging project project then, and create the factory branch. This is the, the actual the actual factory branch is this one. And this would form a staging project then. That one could be built in OBS. And when it's done, it would get accepted. First step would be to put this commit that was just staged in the actual factory branch. Then the project could create a commit that refers to the, or the move the branch to the top commit of the staging. And after that, we can finally delete the staging um, references and end up with exactly this model that we we had before, the, the final state. So it was very quick. Um, to summarize, I think we can do it. We can really do Git native packaging in a way that doesn't suck. But it is absolutely crucial that we need proper tooling, like we talked about the submodule commands, those need to be adjusted, but also we need support from the Git hosting solution. Like all this magic with pushing somewhere, and then a factory branch needs to be created, um, signatures for, for reviews need to be created, then the, um, keeping that stuff in sync, so submodules can't refer to commits that don't exist anymore, that all of that needs to be implemented on server side. So that needs support from the Git hosting solution. So I don't think that we can do that with GitHub. Maybe individual packages can still use GitHub for just a plain package for their OpenSUSE branch, but all this stuff that ends up in a distribution, I think still needs to be in our own hosting solution that is running inside SUSE, OpenSUSE infrastructure. Yeah, and a big question mark is still the uh, maintenance workflow, so I didn't think about that. That will be the, the next step after figuring this out. Uh, anyway, that's it from my side. So, any more questions in the back? 
Wait for the microphone. Uh, why do you think that the tooling for the Git workflow will materialize uh, uh, in a way that doesn't suck uh, when we have uh, this OBS for ages? and the tooling still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would hope that the Git hosting solution we choose is not one that we develop from scratch. So it is, it, the Git hosting solution should be already in a good state when we take over or contribute. And yes, SUSE needs to pay people to, to, to implement choosing, that. We are choosing submodules that suck. So, no, we are back to uh, the same problem. We are choosing tooling that is hard to use. But submodules suck for everyone today already. And if all of us agree that it sucks, but we still want to use them, then one of us will step up and fix that in upstream for everyone forever. Uh, there are people <laughs> yeah. that didn't work so far. So. Fun? It's ambitious, it's not impossible, but I have my doubts. Of course, I mean, that, that's need, that needs work. That, that absolutely needs work. It's not done yet. Yeah. Well, the idea is just that you present it new to me, so I haven't thought this over, but uh, you present the submodules as a concept, sort of. Uh, we don't need to build the whole tree. So we can have something like submodules where you say there's another repo and there's this commit and um, make a, a marker of any sort saying this commit tree goes here. So and we could use our own tooling uh, to make that uh, convenient. So we, so we don't have to use uh, Git submodules as they are right now. Do I, uh, do I get this right? Um, we, we don't necessarily have to use the existing command line tools for that, yes. So, but we could still use the the way it's in Git. So in like having the commit in the in the tree, that's something we can just use, and then have tooling that maintains this this reference in the tree. And that in fact it can be done with with a few lines of shell. And we just omit this this Git modules file because it's it's kind of implicit if we if we agree that we have a um, a, a setup on the Git hosting solution like this where we put all packages in a pool and have all the projects in, in a project project, <laughs> then it's kind of implicit where the packages come from. They are always from, from this location. So you don't actually need this .git modules file that has an URL that just tells you where it is, right? In the front? Oh, the, the, the microphone is... Wait a, wait a second. The, the, there's, a, there's the microphone is in the back, so <laughs> let's. Ah, okay. There, there's, wait a minute. There's a, there's a conflict. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's let's get uh, let's do Jeff first, and then you can continue with the mic behind. Leave it behind. I will just I will just repeat the question. How do I want to pin submodules for deleted packages? Yeah, the question is if we delete packages. Like they, they should probably not vanish from this pool. What Fedora does is they just put a commit on, like a last commit on top that removes all files and, a, and puts a readme, I think, that says this package is deleted. So then the, the package would never go away. And if, if a package with the same name would have to be recreated, then you can you know, move this, the reference of this branch somewhere else, like rename the main branch to something main-old, and then create a new history. So I think it, it would work, yeah. Okay, thanks. Sorry, in the back now. The the micro I can't hear it. Uh, first revision of package, 
Then you update the package, submit it again. But the first submission is uh, accepted, then your new submission is broken because uh, these are independent histories. And OBS doesn't know about the fact that you are fast forwarding because they are independent. And uh, I'm not sure I got this right. You mean if there's two submissions for the same package at the same time, to the same target? Well, no, not necessarily the same time. Like, okay, I do a submission today to factory. Next week, I uh, found, oh, I need to fix this and do a new submission. And then this old submission gets accepted. My new submission is broken because these are independent histories. And OBS doesn't know it's passed forward. Like, it could uh, uh, rebase the submission uh, against the new state because it's actually uh, based on the same. You mean today this is the, the case? Yes, it's the case. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with Git, you would have the same problem because you have two, yes. two different trees with two different histories. Yes, that's how it's designed. It will suck the same way. Uh, well, this is a standard procedure in Git, right? So you have to rebase your stuff, and Git helps you with that. It's much no, smarter than that always. It, it would be fast forward because you are basing on the previous state, which was previ uh, already merged. So it's fast forward for Git, but not for OBS because it does these independent histories. Okay, I mean, okay, I guess I can't follow. Maybe we need to discuss this afterwards. And the other thing is you said you don't do conflicts, okay. and it, that's absolutely true because uh, you always merge with their strategy. That doesn't, that always resolves conflict by accepting all the files from the new package. So yes, there is no conflict because you do it this way. Yeah. There's, oh, the time, okay. Out of time, no more questions. Catch me on the hallway. So thanks. <laughs>